All right, boys. Henry versus Dreamy. It's my favorite game of yesterday in the Madden Bowl. Want to do a little film room for you. There's so much to be talked about uh, with this. Went ahead and tried. Hopefully, this will uh, fix the quality too. I tried to download it on uh, YouTube Premium for you guys. That way, hopefully, it'll, it'll see a little bit better. But anyways, um, so okay. Want to talk about these two players going to this matchup, and then also just want to kind of get into some of the basic things that we take away. Uh, I, I did. A, I'm doing another video that I want you guys to watch. Hopefully, if you if you if you guys want to know why stuff like this matters, uh, why learning the meta matters, why studying these specific players matters, uh, no matter what year of men you're playing, check out that video. I think I'm gonna drop it tomorrow morning. Uh, so make sure that you uh, check that out. But I want to talk about Drini and Henry. Drini was basically uh, a lot of people would say like Drini was Henry before Henry. He was the young prodigy. He was uh, he was so good. Um, and what made Drini a special Madden player really was his defense was just incredible. His game management was also really good. He always kind of just found a way to win, and that's kind of a very similar uh, to what we see in Henry's game. Now, uh, I do want to talk about just like schematics, what these guys are doing. So Drini is in Jets on offense. Uh, we have a full epic on that on the Patreon. He's also in 3-3-5 odd. We actually have a breakdown of that defense on the Patreon as well. 3-3-5 uh, odd, only player in the, in the field that's running this defense. And we're actually going to see maybe why that was a bad decision. Um, I'm not sure. So uh, I saw, I actually watched a, a, a game between David T and Goes. Goes is a big time friend of Drini's. And Goes was running this three through five odd defense, and, and and it was good, but then it was bad. <laughs> it was kind of like kind of like the, the the story of the three through five odd. So you'll see Henry just absolutely uh, block this blitz that he has out of three through five odd, and we'll talk about that. That's one little thing you can learn when you watch these games. How are they blocking the blitz? What is their pass protection system? Those are all elements. Okay, Henry, my opinion, best man player ever. And also, in my opinion, probably the the, the one I want to watch the most uh, just in terms of adjusting. How does he adjust? That's what I want to see. So we see a send five. Uh, he sends five out. Okay. And then Henry's base defense is, guess what it is? It's dollar. And guess what? It's free safety zone blitz three. At least I'm pretty sure it is. So, guys, we've been talking about this free safety zone blitz defense Probably for the last two or three months, it started with cover two press. Then it became this free safety zone blitz with the deep out zone KOs. If you put mid zone and deep out together on those outside guys, it takes this defense to the next level. We've got a full dollar ebook on this and teach a ton about how to uh, apply it. Again, all ebooks are on the Patreon. You get everything for just $10. But that's what Henry's basing out of. The number one player in the world is running free safety zone blitz. Okay, so guess what? That means it's probably pretty good. All right. So he does something interesting right off rip here. I want you to look at this. This is really important. Okay. So he backs this guy up. This is a great decision by Henry. And you, this is what you can learn in these games that you just don't see anywhere else. This is the kind of stuff. This is why you watch these games, or at least this is why you study these games. Okay. Obviously, you've got the commentators, and it's really interesting and fascinating. But watch what he does here. So he backs this corner off. Okay. It's going to make the blitz come in better. But then he does something. With this corner, you you can no longer cross man this guy on really anybody. You can't cross man him on the slot to stop a post. You but what he does is he cross mans this corner onto the running back. Guess what that would stop? The running back streak. So I'm like already I'm like oh that's a really good adjustment for bunch strong because then that allows you to maybe play like just a basic cloud flat half and then you could use her here like I'm, my mind's already going like okay what we could we could do a lot with that so anyway you'll see that uh, after the snap and then in terms of the other adjustments you basically have a hard flat a third a middle third and then an outside third so what's Henry's user responsibility. His user responsibility is either this drag or the corner. So he kind of starts here, and then he's his thinking is because he's sending heavy pressure, he's going to go back here. Actually, he bluff blitzes this guy. I'm not sure why he does that, um, but that's an interesting decision as well. I'm not sure why. Did I, did I get that right? Maybe I got that wrong. No, he sends five. The guy just gets, like, stuck. Yeah, never mind. He, gets, he sends five. The guy gets stuck. All right. So guess what Drini goes to? Double corner. Best, one of the best passing concepts in the game this year. And we'll see here again. There's some basic adjustments. He's trying to hit this fade. This right here was the – when you guys watched the game I played against Young Kiv, 
that's what I was throwing. That's the kind kind of some of the routes I was trying to throw, and I kept throwing picks or getting KOs. Um, so I'm not sure. Maybe there is an actual way to throw that route, but in general, I don't think there really is. He goes to tight doubles. Uh, Jermaine loves tight doubles because he got the short corner. But guess what Henry does? A little purple over there. A little uh, the s- putting your safeties in curl flats is one of the simplest adjustments for these short corners. Just a little curl flat over here on the short side of the field. It plays really well for those short corner routes, um, it, or, or even on the wide side of the field too. So, anyways, free safety zone blitz. Now Drini does a lot of just like I would just say like random stuff on offense, and it's it, it's how he's always played. And I think he does that. I'm not sure why he does that. I would assume just to try to uh, throw the opponent off guard. And cause he's never, um, it's, it's, it, he gets to the meta in an off meta way. Like, like tight doubles. We got a crosser, a zig, a Texas and a streak. So we got a high low to the right. We got a high low to the left. That's a pretty meta thing to have, but he just gets to it a little differently. And so what, what that does for Henry uh, defensively, what I would say is it, it limits what Henry can do from an adjustments perspective because everything at this point is probably random to Henry. Like, like this little motion over here, um, you know, obviously there's a, only a couple things that he could probably be running the tight end on, but let's just watch the adjustments here. So you see we get a little man up on the C route. I'm not sure why that adjustment, but probably for Y curl because he knows he's in jets. Another thing that these pro players are so good at is understanding like playbook knowledge. And so they understand like, okay, you're in the jets playbook. That means when you go to bunch, you have certain threats that aren't maybe in the Colts playbook. That's why you'll hear if you ever ask a comp player how to stop bunch, the first question they'll probably say is what bunch are they running? Because the defense is different if you're playing Jets bunch or you're playing Colts bunch, or at least what you have to be aware of is different. So, uh, and, and another thing here real quick, Henry, when, when, when the chips are down, guess what Henry's going to do? And this is what we see early on here. Henry's going to send five and let's just give you the exact setup. We come out, this is free safety zone blitz. We're going to pinch our defensive line. We're going to back this guy off. We're going to blitz this guy. This guy's already blitzing on that play, and this guy's going into coverage. And we could put him in a lot of different coverages, really whatever we want to do. Uh, probably what Henry did was probably, a, I don't know for sure, um, but he probably just put him in a hook curl. Yep, normally just a little basic hook curl here. And so what you're seeing is why would you send five? Well, you send five because that that specific blitz is is – they have to block somebody. If they don't block somebody, uh, that that blitz is going to get home every single time. Okay, so let's get into Henry's offense. He's in Colts, and so you're going to see uh, what he has. A lot of this audible to the bunch nasty. Now, what Henry does early is he runs the ball. Now, this comes back to like a game management thing. Henry's playing three three five odd. He, I don't know that he's gotten a ton of reps. I'm sure he's gotten reps against it because he. I think he. You know, he had to prepare for playing either Drini or Gabigol. And Gabigol was running more of a dollar defense base. And then, obviously, Drini's in this 3-3-5 odd. So he probably has some level of repetition against 3-3-5 odd. But the point I was trying to make is he starts out running the ball. Something real simple that I think gets glossed over a little bit is what's he what's he doing by that? He's managing the game. He's testing. How does he respond to some of these run plays? All of that stuff. Now, he's going for a bomb here. He actually probably might have had it over the top but he's able just to check it down to his flat and uh, go. Another thing that was mentioned in the broadcast and another thing that is important to point out, Henry blocks his running back the majority, at least early on of the game. He's doing that as well to limit the pressure because there's this fundamental principle in Madden that everybody uh, needs to understand. And that is that nobody likes to get screamed at. Nobody likes to get screamed at. So that is why no matter what year of Madden you are playing, your defense better be able to blitz. You're, you're, if the, a good Madden defense makes you respect all of the different types of pressure you can create. Okay, think about dollar. Think about three, four odd. Think about uh, even three, three cub. You have to respect the blitz threat in some ways. What it means is you're gonna have to block a tight end, block a running back, slide protect. If you don't, and you send five out, then you're gonna have to make a quick read, and that's where a lot of mistakes can happen when you start to have to speed up the game. 
Now here, guess what Henry runs? This, and we talked about this from John Beast uh, yesterday in the film room. But I want to just uh, hit, touch on this. So you get a high low. What's your high low? You've got this clear out. You've got a high here. Now, as a tight end, I think is, uh, I guess he streaked him, huh? That's kind of honestly, I don't, I don't know what he's doing with that. I guess he's just trying to hold the user in the middle of the field because he figured he could get that right there. Henry will do a lot more of that than most people will, where he'll run like route combinations and it's almost like the route combination, the like the, a significant portion of the route combo was devoted to holding the user. So Henry gets seven on his first drive. Drini gets three. Henry's already at advantage. He sends five. Drini's able to pick up the blitz and he's able to dot it. But just understand here a tendency. Henry sends five on the, he sent five on the first play, both drives. Okay. Those are some other little things that are super important uh, when you're trying to study what the best players in the do, because here's how the skill is defined. Skill is defined as doing exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. If you do the wrong thing at the right time, or if you do the right thing at the wrong time, you're going to inevitably not get a good result. Let me give you, you'll see an example of this later on in this game that uh, happens with Drini. But Henry, every single, uh, he, he is, he's, he's starting the drive out with pressure. Now, Drini keeps going on this run. Obviously, he's probably labbed this. Um, you know, at this point in the year, they probably all have. But it's just not working. It's just not working, um, and I don't think Henry's doing anything crazy to try to stop it, okay? Uh, he's pretty much using the same that we always see with this kind of defense. One of the things that's really important to understand about how Henry plays Madden um, and how Drini plays Madden to a degree as well, th these are two of the best defensive players in the world. That's the reason I want to talk or touch on this. So, number one, they are going to know every single adjustment that they have in their arsenal. Uh, I talked about this before, but I talked about I, one of my friends was a competitive shooter and won a lot of championships in competitive shooting. And he said one of the things that's really important is you have to learn how to become proficient with your tools, right? All You need to understand what your tools are, and you need to become proficient with using those tools. That's what they're doing defensively. They are proficient in every single adjustment possible. They have tested it. Uh, they have tested every single adjustment they can make out of their formation. So out of the gun that they are shooting, they know how to shoot it in every single possible way they need to shoot it. They know how to stop the run out of it. They know how to stop the pass out of it. They know how to stop trips out of it, all from the same look, because fundamentally in defense, you want to generally make every single defense look identical so that your opponent doesn't get any pre-snap tells. Now, uh, right here, again, another first down situation. Uh, Henry sends five. So what do we have here? We have a high low to the left side. He doesn't have anybody over here. There is no one there for this flat. So where's Henry? Henry's darting here with the user. Now, this is actually a really good play. Um, I know it, it, the fumble part is, I guess, lucky. But watch what he does. He's This is um, an example. Uh, I think Skimba was talking about this, who, who I heard it from first. But basically, the whole idea is I'm going to run at this like I'm going to fully commit to this. And then because I'm sending pressure at doing exactly the right thing at exactly the right time at the right time, uh, which is kind of how he defines it, uh, would basically just be like you're, you're going to jump here and then you're going to come back to here. So he's coming. He, he, he's running at this, but he, you see him turning around. He's going back here because he knows that's what's open on this defense. Right. So he's he's coming back to the middle of the field because he knows there's nobody there. And then he gets a hit stick, fumble, and gets a big, gets a stop, and he's out of there. He might even get six out of this. I don't think he gets six out of this. Um, but but huge play. Now again, we can debate. Was it lucky that he got the fumble? Sure, may have been lucky, but you can't all you can't um, ignore the fact that it was a good user play too. Like he he worked the flat, came back to the in route and made a good play, and he's been playing good defense all game long as well. So it doesn't negate anything from, from what Henry accomplished. But Drini did get a little bit unlucky uh, with the fact that he got a fumble. Now, this game situation, this is, again, back to what I was talking about, doing exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. Henry has a decision to make here, and I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know, trying to think about what I would do if I was in his shoes. But what I'm thinking here is, okay, Based on the clock, this is not too complicated to clock out. Now, he goes out of bounds there. I would just immediately call play, try to get it to the two-minute warning. He doesn't do that. He comes out and just stays in his system, his offense. 
But my, my thought would be if I can take all of the clock and even go up three or seven, he gets ball at half. Now you'll hear um, at halftime, well, you won't hear, but they said on the broadcast at halftime, Henry did not realize uh, it appeared that Henry didn't know that he got ball at half. Had he known he got he got ball at half, he might have played this situation a little bit differently because what Henry's trying to do is Henry's trying to score. Um, he's passing the ball. He's not running the ball. He's really not concerned about the clock. He's just trying to score. Now, another reason why he might be doing that is because maybe he's been seeing in Drini's offense, okay, I think I can hold him at least to field goals. Um, he's already done that once. Or the other thing he might be thinking is, let me give Drini the ball back and see if Drini will make a mistake because now if Henry goes up two possessions – and that's just an absolute beam. See, these are the things you just don't see. Everyone says, oh, the pros run the same play, all that. Look at this route combination. Where have you seen this this year? This is out of um, double post. He's got this shorter C route. Let me just see if I can get a better, uh, if he can show me the player a little bit better here. Let's see. There. Okay. So this is the play art. So we have the wheel. Uh, and then we have this short side or the C route, the short C route on the double post. And then he hot routes this guy to a hot route master post. Now, why does he do these things? He's going to put this guy on a hot, hot route master post. And the purpose of the hot route master post is to get underneath of the zones. The double post route runs too deep downfield. So he's going to motion this out and it's going to basically be almost like an in route. It's just a sharp cut. And he's going to try to throw that ball like right over here. And the hitch is designed to pull a hook curl. Uh, for example, most people in this game are shading their hook curls underneath because those that generally plays a lot of stuff better. Okay, so if Drini has a hook curl, let's say he's in cover three, and either one of these guys are in hook curls, right? If with because he's shaded down, the hook curl is coming down to the hitch every single time. So Henry's thinking I can throw in this little pocket, so the user now has to stay here. Now, because the user has to stay here, this uh, wheel route to the wide side is going to pull a third, and so this uh, a third or a quarter. So the only adjustment that can really be ran is a cloud flat over here to the right side. On the left side, we also, because we're running the short side, let's say he runs a cloud flat, this route has a potential of getting over the top of this. And we'll actually look at this play, because this is a pretty big play in the game. I did want to do a couple breakdowns uh, here. So... What do we have? We have a, a essentially a rolled coverage. We have a hard flat, is what it seems like. Let me back this up, actually. Just look at it one more time here. Let's see. We have this. Okay. I don't know what this. I don't know what this is here. It looks like it looks like a. I just don't know what that is. I don't know what that adjustment is. I think that's a man up. I think that's a man up, honestly. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what this guy is, but I th I'm pretty sure it's a man up on R1. Okay. So we'll leave it at that. So what's open? Well, the user's over here, but the flat would eventually be open. And then the covered shell. This guy is going into a cover three. Cover three, half over here. And then uh, we're probably blitzing four on the front. He's usering this guy on the left, which means this guy is probably going to be on a hook curl. And this guy is going to be on some kind of flat zone. Okay. So you see, let's see what this uh, looks like. Okay, here we go. All right, perfect. So this makes a lot of sense. So uh, once Henry, so Henry's peeking over here because he knows what, what can stop him. I, and also his user's over here. So you never want to throw the ball at somebody's user if you don't have to. So you're immediately, your eyes, Henry's eyes are going to the right side. He sees this guy back off, back up like that, like he's in a third or a quarter. Automatically, automatically, the user cannot possibly get over here. So this is a touchdown. It's automatically open. Like it, it just, just based off of he looks at this defender, he goes back. It's automatically open because we know that this uh, wheel is going to pull the third, and we're going to throw this ball right here. Now, for good measure, if you can see, watch what his user does to the post route. This is important, or not, not necessarily important, but it's just kind of interesting. So the user here, look, he's got, he's got two touchdowns here. This guy's open, this guy's open, this guy's open. The user has to take this right here, and Henry throws the touchdown. Really nice red zone combination. If you uh, go back and look at why that works, uh, you might want to add that to your game because that's a good red zone route combination, and there's a lot of reasons as to why that works, but basically he's able to attack both sidelines and the middle of the field within one route combo. 
offense in general is trying to attack the most amount of space possible. We're trying to create and attack space. We do that by using the entire width and depth of the field when we're developing our plays. Okay. All right. So we got wide trail here. So he's going to go for this bomb. Now this is a big, big play. Okay. Minute 53. So you're in Drini's shoes. Now, partially here, you're just trying to score, right? You're just trying to score. But more importantly, what is going on? Well, he's going to get this bomb, but look at the clock. Minute 45, he's going to juke, juke, and basically try to score. Now, let's just assume he scores here. Let's just assume he scores here because he's totally trying to score. If he scores, it is 10 to 14, okay? It's 10 to 14, but look at, look at the clock. Look at the clock. Henry, 142 with ball, so he can go down and score and clock him out of the game. Because this uh, is going to end the half, which is basically like an automatic stop. If you score right before half, it's almost like getting a stop, whether you're on offense or whether you get ball at half or not. Okay. Super, super important. So back to like route, uh, doing exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. That's a great route combination. He just ran that, in my opinion, at the wrong time, or at least him trying to score. Um, he might have, he, he probably should have like went down. And then try to take some more clock because Henry's understanding that. So what's he doing? He's calling timeouts. He's trying to get the ball back here. And now Drini's in a position where you're in a the, the the hardest place in Madden to score is the red zone. Why? Because there is a limited amount of space, right? There's a limited amount of space. Again, offenses try to create space, defenses try to constrain space. When the field itself constrains the space, then it's easier to defend. And so Drini ends up having, like, he just takes the touchdown. Now, why does he take the touchdown? I'm not 100% sure you'd have to ask him that question, but I, I, would, I, would, I would kind of, I guess, venture to believe the reason he takes the touchdown is because he is trying to basically just play catch up. Okay. And also, the other little factor that. Again, the red zone is the hardest place to score. So I, he might not want to be in a goal line situation because he knows how important it is that he gets a touchdown versus a field goal, um, and, and, and that might be a factor. But what does he what does he do by doing that? I mean, he 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 has not shown much defensively at all. The blitz is getting picked up pretty much every single time, and Henry can now either go up three or seven here. And if he does either one of those things, it puts him at a significant advantage. But again, what's Henry's mindset? I think Henry's thinking Drini gets ball. I think that's what he's thinking here. Um, and so it, it kind of affects what he does uh, just in terms of his play calling as we get more closer to the, to the red area of the field. But just kind of something, again, skill doing exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. In my opinion, Drini scoring – uh, a touchdown significant or going for the, even just the fact that he called the bomb, probably not a great play call because, because him scoring is an advantage for Henry in that situation, because you can, you can get downfield relatively simply and easily in this game with a minute and a half or a minute, even as long as you have a timeout or two. So um, yeah, here, this is, this is, this route combo is I think interesting. So, Okay. This is like the new route combo everybody's running. It's out of dagger. Uh, Henry, I think, said he – I think Henry said he created out of Bunch Strong Nasty. Um, but anyways, doesn't really matter. This is a cross concept, okay? And I've talked about the cross concept before. Why cross? You have a crosser. You have a backside in. And then oh, typically if you were in spread, this guy would be on an out route. And here he's on a, a drag, which is fine too. It's, it's going to – again, where does it attack? It attacks the same amount of space, but it has all this field to be able to work, right? So uh, we get the clear out streak, we get the crosser, we get the drag, we get this, right? Now, what's Henry What's Henry C? Well, this guy's manned up. So this guy's basically dead. So the read is really between this guy and this guy. And Drini's user is, is, is um, on circle. And then at the last second, he baits back here. So, yeah, good user by Drini. And, and, and what's really cool that Drini did there was he used the drag long enough to make it a really hard throw on the sideline and kind of made Henry have to throw that in route. So it was a really good user uh, by Drini. But there you see, go back to it. He doesn't have that crosser manned up. And so Drini has to use with a crosser, so the in route is wide open. 46 seconds left. 
If you're Henry, again, you score with very, very little time. Uh, very, very little time. And honestly, a field goal is fine. It goes to Dagger. Now he gets out of bounds here. Now, the other factor in, in game management, clock management, Drini has two timeouts. So Drini has these two timeouts, okay? And Drini honestly wants Henry, at this point, he wants Henry to score. Why does he do that right there where he just runs into the end zone and doesn't take the timeouts? Again, there's really only a couple of reasons that I could think of. Either A, uh, he just is trying to beat the snot out of Drini. I, I mean, he's just trying to like basically force Drini into more mistakes. He, it's what he feels like he can do defensively. Another reason why he might have done that, though, is because he thinks he gets ball or he doesn't get ball at half, so he has to get a touchdown, and so he takes what he you know he takes his touchdown because he has to get one, um, or I don't I just don't know why he does that, and maybe a third reason, and, and ultimately I think this is this is I think the real reason why um, it is just really freaking hard to score on the goal line against a really competent Madden player. If they are competent, they know what they're doing. It's hard to score from ten yard from the ten yard line inward. It's very difficult to score uh, touchdowns. So maybe that's another reason why Henry does that. Okay, we're going to double corner. We're going. To, he does it out of flood a lot. I like it. I mean, it's it's a good it's a good uh, way to run it. You're seeing it. Um, you're seeing it come open a lot. But now Drini's actually not in a bad spot. He's got the ball uh, with 32 seconds. But the other little factor here is. 21-10, so it's an 11-point game. If Drini kicks three, he's now only down by one possession, right? But, and again, in this situation, you have to kind of anticipate, like, I'm probably only going to get three here. It's only got two timeouts, only got 30 seconds. I'm playing one of the best – I'm playing the best batting player of all time who's going to have good defense for good situations. That's another thing that's really important. Watch the defense Henry's trying to play. He's trying to force Drini to throw the ball in the middle of the field. So what's he doing? Sideline Mabel coverage here to the left side, heavy sideline coverage. He's also blitzing more uh, than he would normally, so he's he's trying to put more pressure on Drini. Uh, that what one of the other things that's really good about blitzing that a lot of people don't understand about blitzing, what blitzing does for your defense if you have a good blitz. Number one, it forces them to block. Number two, you're going to get better sheds if you do get the blitz picked up because you're sending more people. More people have a chance to shed. Number three, in general, when you blitz, even if they pick it up, it's still going to typically get to the opponent faster than if you play coverage. So if you're sending five versus you're sending three, as long as the rush angles are, are like some like decent, like the pressure is going to get home faster. So it limits the amount of time for those deep routes down the field for Drini to go down and get a touchdown. In Henry's mind, I just got to hold Drini to three. That's probably what he's thinking here. He's just trying, okay, I'm going to hold Drini to three. And and here, honestly, that was like kind of, and you see him, him his mental, um, you see this. This is actually a huge play. So Drini has, uh, Drini has one timeout. I'm not even sure what this play was. Um, okay, we're in bunch. Okay, and then I think he just, yep, smash return. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought it was just smash return. So he puts the tight end on his egg. Again, Drini, I just don't he just does stuff where it's like, I don't know why you did that, but okay. Normally the way this route combo is developed is we got a clear out streak here to the right, a drag, a slot apprentice crosser or post, and then this guy is gonna do a little return route. What Drini does, uh, which is getting very it's the same exact concept. It's the same exact concept, okay? It's just done a little differently. He puts the tight end on a zig. And so, and then he has the post and he has this little return route. So it's, I mean, literally look at this. It's literally the same uh, in terms of how it attacks the, the defense. So look at this real quick. Early, it's going to attack this little middle section of the field right in here. And then it's going to attack the flat over here. So you have to have a purple and a hook curl to defend this guy right here. And then you also have to have a, um, you don't really have to have a purple to defend this, but you have to have a vert hook. So this guy's going to go out and come back in late. And what's going to happen is when this guy zigs out, he's going to pull this hook curl to the right. He's going to pull this flat zone to the left or to the right. And so now what we're saying is if this guy blitzes or is not in the middle of the field zone, then this is going to be wide open. But what's really important here is this situation is very, very important. Okay. Um, you, you just don't want Drini to throw the ball out of bounds, right? You don't want him to be able to catch it and get out of bounds. So it's fourth down, so he has to get the conversion, but he also has to realize, I've only got one timeout, okay? So if he catches the ball in bounds, he has to call timeout. 
So that's why, again, doing exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. And when you're in the middle of a Madden game, it's really important, in my opinion, that you think through a little bit what your plan is before the ball is snapped. Um, not Obviously, you can only do that to a point. But uh, right here, look at this defense here. Henry's thought is, uh, and, and, and we got to figure out why what's what's Henry trying to accomplish defensively. Okay, that's another important thing. Well, it's fourth and three. So if he gets if he gets a stop, then he he can go get three. And now Drini is basically the game's over. Um, okay, so we're playing DB Fire. He's going to send five. Now, why does he send DB Fire here? Is actually really important to just think about for a second. The way that most people pick up the A-gap blitz is they double-team this defensive tackle. As you see here, he's double-teaming this defensive tackle. The running back will block the slot corner on the side that that slot corner comes from, which is why you want to send both of the slot corners. Okay? Now, uh, really, really important. So we got a double-team here because we're trying to block the A-gap. we got the running back to the right for the slot corner. DB fire. Now this guy can come completely free because this – you, because we double teamed here, now we've got a two-on-one matchup in terms of our blitz. This is why the best players in dollar will, in key situations, run DB fire two over free safety zone blitz. Okay, It's why you need to understand both blitzes and how they work. Now, from an adjustments perspective, it's not terrible what we get, but what we get is a scissor here to the right. Why would we scissor? Well, because we're trying to take away anything quick to the running back. So, I mean, you just see the way he moves. This is probably a scissor adjustment. What that means is this guy's uncovered. There's nobody covering this guy. But what we have over here, I think, uh, is a little cloud, a half, and a vert hook. So we know uh, off rip, based off of everything that I just explained, that he's going to have to get the ball out quick, right? But situation, 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 situation. His user's here. So when Drini sees that uh, the user is right here, the second – that Henry goes here, he needs to come back up here to take this away. Now, again, part of this, and I'm just as guilty of this as anybody, is the the route combinations Drini runs are so unique and just like kind of random that you you know Henry's maybe never seen a motioned over tight end zig, um, you know. So I I don't know. Let's let's continue to look at this real quick. I actually don't like the scissor adjustment. Oh, okay. Never mind. Never mind. I told you wrong. This is actually much better defense than I thought. So what he does is he mans this guy up over here. I or uh, It's just hard to tell. I think it's still the scissor adjustment. But I think what happens is because he motions this tight end over and the running back blocks this corner instead of double teaming this guy, he's going to now guard the tight end who's uncovered. I think that's true. He could have just manned up the tight end. I don't know for sure. But again, here, right here, you see that man up is it's cloudy enough I would have, man, it, I bet if, and that's why you'll see Henry's facial reaction. He's probably thinking, like, I just got to use her that better because if he starts here, so he just starts here and then he just lurks back. He just runs right back there and he's trying to. He's just a little late. Again, exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. He's a second late and Drini's able to complete that pass and now basically um, kind of guarantee himself a field goal. Now, 12 seconds, he's just trying to take a shot, and it's actually not a – I mean, uh, and you see what Henry does, and this is important. When you're playing these end-of-the-half scenarios because these literally decide games, um, Henry's going to gas him up. So long story short, uh, Drini does not get a touchdown. We can just watch this play here, but I want to get us to the second half and kind of see how this game winds down. But anyway, we go all verticals. Has the corner route. Oh, I forgot about that play. So, again, exactly the right thing, exactly the right time, super important. What's he do here? He sends DB fire, okay? Why does he send DB fire? Well, because, again, they have to respect this, and this this now this blitz becomes a screamer, okay? So what we're probably doing here, uh, I think what he does is just quarter, 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 maybe this guy in a mid-read or a middle third probably. Actually, it looks literally DB fire two. Actually, I'm pretty sure what he does is got two quarter, or he's got a quarter, a half, a half, a quarter, and a middle third. Okay, not terrible adjustments for in a half situation, but you can't use her that. You got to go use her that right there. Uh, Drini almost scores on him. And, and Henry, as you can see, I mean, he's lucky. He's, he's He knows it too. So, uh, yeah, that is uh, that is the first half. Pretty eventful first half. Hopefully a lot to learn in there. Let's get to the second half here. 
Okay, so Henry, this is where Henry says, like, oh, I get ball? I didn't realize I got ball kind of thing, right? So he gets the ball uh, to start the second half, and he's winning by eight. So what's really cool about this for him is if he goes down, and even if he only gets three, he, he's, he's, he's in complete control of the game, okay? So what's he do first play? Runs the ball. Why does he run the ball? Because for Henry, the faster this game gets over, the more likely he wins the game. When you're losing the game, you're trying to extend the game so you have time to catch up. When you're winning the game, you're trying to shorten the game so that they don't have time to catch up. Now, simultaneously while doing those things, you also have to actually get a first down, you know, all that. So anyway. All right. So second and four, uh, going to trips, little street corner in route. Good. Gets that. I mean, you're just looking at them. I mean, Henry's sending five out now. He's like, this blitz is not it. <laughs> Um, he's, he's lapped pass pro, I, I guess I, I, and now the other thing is Drini switches defenses mid game. Part of the problem with three, three, five odd also is the fact that there's, there's not much else in the playbook, right? If you're running three, three, five odd, you're probably either in Baltimore or you're in new England, new England has six, one, which is a, an okay secondary defense. But literally, Baltimore doesn't have anything worth running as a secondary formation. I know that because I actually just played a game with Baltimore, and uh, I, I just accidentally had it. Um, one four six is nowhere near as good as dollar, you know. Just just in general. So he only has this three through five. So he has this three through five. Now, what he does out of three through five is actually interesting. And I actually played somebody that did this to me. Basically. This uh, blitz angle out of here, this guy will come in through the A gap. Okay. If, if you, like, let's say you use her the slot corner or something, this is a blitz threat right in the middle of the field. You also get okay sheds uh, out of a send three. You see there, a send three shed. So you get okay sheds out of this. You got a little bit of a blitz threat, not much of a blitz threat. The problem is coverage adjustments. They completely jacked up the coverage adjustments. So uh, that's why you see Henry trying to dot it a lot more. Uh, but the other thing is, we're basically playing man to man. Uh, so we're playing man to man. What you'll see, this is what I don't love about this. He's got the wheel route wide open uh, here. But again, he's just, I don't know. He is kind of getting screamed at. So he's trying to throw that. He gets a random, this guy bumps. Drini gets a, gets a stop. And now, all of a sudden, Drini's back in the game. With, with literally a couple of plays, Drini is now back in the game. And again, what is skill? Doing exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. And you're going to see something here. So what's he go to? He goes to the bomb, he's got the bomb, he throws the bomb, and he's literally right back in the game. I would like to see Henry just take the bomb away, force him to check down, because if he can force Drini to take three, he's still in more, he's he's way more in control of the game than if Drini gets seven there. Drini gets uh, a touchdown. Now, what's he do? He goes for two. Again, exactly the right thing, exactly the right time. I don't think it's the right time to go for this, because if... It, because now if he if if Drini doesn't get this and Henry scores a touchdown, Henry is back up by two possessions. Whereas if so, so if you think about that from what it does from Henry from a pressure perspective, it relieves a lot of the pressure like Henry getting that stop right there. Where's the hardest place to score inside the five inside the 10. So if he didn't have a really good play and clearly wasn't a great, you know, wasn't a great play. Wasn't like there was a lot of options on that play. You probably, you know, you probably shouldn't have went for that because now it relieve it relieves the pressure on Henry. And what does pressure do? Pressure increases the likelihood of mistakes, right? Uh, basically, pressure increases the likelihood of someone's going to do the wrong thing. Okay. So, anyways, that is uh, kind of some of the bigger picture stuff going on in this game. And so now Henry mentally is like, okay, all I have to do is I got to go down and score a touchdown, which in Madden 24, if you're at this level of Madden, you can score touchdowns. <laughs> you know, you can score touchdowns. Um, it's more of an offensive game this year. Although I will say at this point in the year, there's more defense than there's ever been in a in the in the next gen Madden, with the exception, of course, the loop. I don't know if there's more defense. I'm trying to think of how to word it. You can actually play pretty good defense in this Madden, but it's still an offensive Madden. So you can get a stop, but you it's still more of an offensive focused Madden. Okay? Trying to trying to figure out how to phrase that. Because because we have more KOs, because we have lurk artists, things like that. 
Okay. So Henry's thinking, okay, let's just go down, get seven. It'll put me up by two possessions. If he goes up by two possessions, again, what's the factor? The clock is the factor, right? Because again, Henry's just trying to essentially get out of the game. He's won the game. He's just got to close the game. That was a great user rush. Uh, there, Henry ran a route combination. Wesley ran a lot the other day. Good user rush from Drini. Able to get the pressure. And this is not bad defense, but the problem with his defense, and you'll see it right here, they just randomly bump, man. Like, if you try to play press man and live and die by press man, they just bump like that. And Henry has a great little pass lead to the left side. Even though he had a middle third defender there, Henry understands that if you freeform it to the left, it gets it away from that middle third defender, and you're able to able to uh, put yourself in a position to score a touchdown. And now, here we go. We're up two possessions. That is so important. Uh, that is so important. Because Drini also, if you understand how Drini plays Madden, when Drini is at his best, especially offensively, he plays really slow. He's motioning people. He's audibling around. He's hot routing, creating stuff, freestyling. You can't do that in this situation because you've got to lengthen the game, right? Now here, I guess he goes to a run, and, and really the main purpose of that I would assume is just to try to get on hash. You know, you don't ever, again, what's, you know, the problem with run is the clock moves. So at this point, Drini has to score. He has to score fast so that he can give himself a chance to get a stop. Okay. Now he goes to Y curl here and he's going for a bomb and he kind of almost had it. Um, this is my opinion. Uh, this is my opinion. And it just comes out of like, I really learned this in the game I played against Kiv. Sometimes trying, especially this year, trying to go for a bomb a lot can really put you at a disadvantage. And you'll sometimes try to force the bomb when it's not there. And I would say in general, bombs in this year's game are harder. They're tighter windows. They're harder. Um, double, you know, if someone knows, how, if you're playing a competent man player on the other side and they have a KO back there, it changes how the bombs, like it changes how, frequently the bombs are going to be open. So that's my two cents. Here he goes to a little streak, C route flat. Again, these combos take too long, and Henry is gassing him up. Why? Why does Henry send pressure? Why do you want to blitz in this situation? This is something that I'm guilty of not doing. Why would you want to blitz in this situation? This, If you watched, uh, I did a, a game breakdown where I think I played for him on YouTube, and there was a in a game situation, and basically he just carved me up. Uh, in the in a in a gotta have it uh, drive situation, but the thing was he had to score fast, and what I did was I basically sent three. I sent three over and over and over again. What you want to do is you want to blitz them because why? If they're trying to to draw up route combinations that take a long time to develop, as someone would do if they're trying to get a big play, then you want to you know increase the pressure so that they don't have time for the routes to develop. And that's what Henry is doing. Okay. That's what Henry's doing on this drive. So really kind of a important little game. Man this game is, uh, this game was honestly a lot more about game management than anything else. Um, and you see Henry just did a great job of it. I mean, it's, uh, it's just mastery. It's mastery of the game management in the situation. So he goes six, one here. Uh, again, just disciplined red zone defense, just disciplined red zone defense. What Henry is, uh, and again, you know, all these comp players know so much about the game, but what's skill doing the right thing at the right time. Henry has just really, I feel like over the years been become very good at that. Like he just doesn't beat himself and he plays he doesn't play like I wouldn't offensively. I would say he plays a little more simple defensively he's always got some kind of like really unique adjustment nobody's seen or he's always got something but in general he just doesn't beat himself and again forces a field goal now Drini's in a position where he has to get a stop he he there's too much time on the clock really I mean you could go for an onside there but again back to the two-point conversion decision he can't onside there because if he holds Henry to three he can't, um, then Henry would be up by two possessions still. Had Drini not gone for two and just taken his field goal, 
it would have continued to increase. It would have continued to keep the pressure on Henry. Right. That's that's the big thing I want to drive home. So, Henry, just run. A couple reasons for the run: get the ball to a hash mark. Uh, trying to get the ball to a hash mark. Trying to get the clock ticking is kind of the key things there. Go to bunch strong nasty. Guess what? Uh, this is a little man. I I kind of am s- somewhat surprised. I, actually, the okay. I'm I'm dumb. I did not. I forgot about that. So uh, what Drini's trying to do is Drini's giving him a man-to-man look, and then he'll adjust it into zones. So Henry was anticipating zone. What was really smart was he put that little flat there because if he thirds that guy, he'll never cover the flat. And he knows that Drini is is kind of with, for lack of better term, he's begging for a stop. He's desperate. He's desperate for a stop. So Drini's sending every. I mean, he's sending pressure, pressure, pressure. So if he sends this guy, he can't cover that flat in that situation. See here, he's got the flat here. Kind of a tight window, but he is, I mean, he was open. Um, and so Drini, or uh, Henry, Henry's moving downfield. Now, again, uh, notice the game management here. He's going to tick, 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 tick. Because if uh, this is the thing that Henry's thinking, in my opinion. If I'm in Henry's shoes, this is what I would be thinking. If I get three points and I take a lot of time off the clock, the game is ma- almost mathematically over. So you'll see here, he ran. Now he's, he's, in, he's in field goal range. So you're going to see, he's taking all this clock. He's just trying to take clock. And, if, you know, and honestly, he's probably willing. He's probably willing, just as long as he takes a significant amount of clock, to kick three and, uh, and give the ball back. Now, the one little factor is what we saw in the game – uh, and this is why you see a pass in this situation. So we get this corner route right here, catches it, and tiptoes out of bounds, and 30 seconds. It's almost masterful the, the, because now with the 30 seconds, when he calls a play next time, he can run the clock all the way down to the two-minute warning. So, uh, you know, that's, that, that, those are some of the things going on. We saw in the game, uh, and you see now Drini's going to go ahead and burn the timeouts. The game, Gabigol versus um, uh, Drini, actually, Drini has already experienced someone getting an onside kick on them. So I don't know how much of a factor that is, but I do know that in general, the odds of you getting a kit onside kick. It, so there was a, an agreement that was made between the competitive Madden players that basically said you cannot high or low onside. You have to just normal onside kick, which is significantly reduces the likelihood of them getting an onside kick. And so, that was um, that's part of it. That's that's part of the the thought process probably from Henry here is it's 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 fairly unlikely that Drini's going to be able to get an onside kick, and because he forces him to have to use these timeouts, Drini has to onside kick. Mathematically, he has to. So uh, Drini's in a really bad spot here. This is why on third and five, you're going to see Henry's just going to run right down the middle uh, with a little zero one trap or counter run. Almost got it. A little frustrated by that, but all in all, still good. Now, the purpose of Drini taking those timeouts, if you're ever in this situation, it's not a huge, huge deal um, in terms of how it changes things, but he, as you can see, he saved the two-minute warning clock stoppage by doing that, so he gets a clock. So, like, the first play when he comes out, he can use the entire field because he knows that he's going to get a clock stoppage from that two-minute warning. So that's what I was saying. Henry takes a significant amount of clock, takes three. That's the right decision, okay? That's the right decision. I've seen Madden players go for that. And uh, basically, you know, I myself have made that mistake. (laughs) So you want to do the right thing at the right time. Okay. Situational. Uh, You should probably see Henry blitz here. I would would send, I think, based off his tendency, he'll probably blitz. Maybe DB fire? No, he actually only sends three here. And that might have had to do with this clock. And Drini just throws a beam to the sideline. That's a good combo out of the bunch strong, that flood flood play. We're going to slot apprentice corner, the slot receiver, and then we're going to tie it in apprentice corner, the tight end. Uh, again, I just got to assume he's going for some kind of bomb with this, the streak of the tight end. The, why would he call Y curl in this spot? Okay, this is, again, right thing, right time. He's going to Y curl, trying to get a big play, gets a big play, and look. He gets a clock stoppage. So Drini is this is about the best case scenario for him, uh, just in terms of what just happened, as far as getting two big plays and saving, uh, and the clock only moved like like twelve seconds. 
came off the clock. So really, really good. And but now you got to score in the red zone. So he throws this. That was covered. Gets a KO. And this is where the pressure just mounts. And in Drini's mind, probably, I've got to score fast. He honestly could be fairly patient with this because, again, you have to get an onside kick anyway. You really just want to get seven here. And I just it's just a bad read, man. It's just a mistake. Pressure forces mistakes. So right here, he's in 6-1. Well, what's the standard adjustment? Hook curl, cloud, hook curl, cloud. Right? That's the standard adjustment. What we see Henry do is I'm pretty sure we see a hook curl, maybe a quarter, and a half. I'm not sure, 100% sure here. I think we saw hard flat, purple, and vert hook here. Send four. That's kind of, again, just disciplined. What I love about the 6-1 and the underrated thing is the sheds. This, I mean, that's just what makes it so good. But here, I mean, there's really – I mean, Henry could have stayed on this the whole way. But he trusts this guy probably, and so he wants to just make sure you can't throw that. He's got this guy going over here to take this away. And, I mean, this is just – I mean, just – there's just nothing there. So you got to throw that ball away. He ends up getting the pick, and that's going to be GG's. Guys, I hope you like these film room breakdowns. I feel like I'm learning a lot doing them, and I'm going to do some really in-depth stuff with these film room breakdowns for our Patreon members. So if you're not a Patreon member yet, it's the best way to support the channel, and I think it's the best way to get better at Madden in general. You can sign up today for just $10. The link's going to be down in the description. Hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, let me know what you thought of the game.